Hello friends, welcome back to my channel where we make pretty costumes and things. Today, we are making a gothic regency gown to wear to the Bridgerton Ball experience. A few months ago when I made my regency long stays, I asked y'all if you would be interested in seeing me make a gothic regency gown and well, you seemed pretty excited. So then when the Bridgerton experience announced that they were coming to Atlanta, I was like, I have the perfect idea. I know exactly what I'm gonna do. Let's go. On one of my many Halloween decor hunting excursions, I was at Joanne Fabrics and I found this really pretty spider fabric and I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I know, I know what I'm gonna use this for. So with my 50% off coupon in hand, I walked right up to the cutting counter and I said, can I get five yards, please? The main inspiration for this dress is obviously spider webs and spiders. I am going to be using this satin that I have had sitting in my stash for for two, maybe three years now. I'm going to be doing my trick where I use the wrong side of the satin. So that like the matte looking side versus the shiny side. If there is time, which you know there is going to be time, I would really like to make some of these freestanding lace spiders to put on the dress that maybe like cascade up to the bodice or something like that. So that's kind of the plan for this gown. I have exactly four days to make this. So let's go. I plan to use this pattern by Kitty J. Berry. I have magically put the pattern pieces together so you don't have to. Wait, that's not how it works, is it? Anyway, let's start cutting out our fabric. Okay, so I think it's good. I don't really know. Like it could probably be an inch longer because I know like my torso is very long, like, but also it's Regency. So like, I know it's supposed to be short. Um, I am going to do the elastic here. We are going to be breaking rules. You know, we've got four days. To, well, now three after this, after I take this off, we have three days to make this gown. So I'm going to be using elastic and I'm going to be doing some overlocking, but I'm fine with it. Uh, I do like the drawstring a lot and I do like that it allows me to control like hiding my stays because I always, I feel like one of the biggest things that I do wrong is that my stays are seen and it's like, okay. I also feel like once I have the added weight of the skirt, it will actually naturally pull this down just a tiny bit more. But since it's no, there's nothing on it, the, the only thing that's pulling it to placement is the ribbon but the sleeves are cute I like them I have to wear a different chemise because my chemise won't fit into these sleeves so right now I'm just wearing a tank top um, and I won't be able to wear this tank top so I'll probably just wear like a different tank top underneath my stays even though whatever but okay I'm ready to cut out my fabric yay Right, friends, so day two of Bridgerton gown. I have to make basically the whole gown, but our mock-up was really good and easy, and we're gonna cut a few corners. So instead of doing French seams, I'm just going to overlock edges. I am gonna stick to the elastic in the waistband area versus doing a drawstring, because I personally don't like the look of like the bow kind of hanging out in the back. So when I do the drawstring for the bodice or for like the top, the neckline, we're gonna tuck the bow into the back once it's like drawn shut. I'd like to get basically everything done except for maybe like, maybe I don't finish the hem. If I could get everything done but the hems of the skirts, I would feel really good about where I'm at because then tomorrow we can start embroidery. So the first thing to do, I guess, is to cut out all of our fabric. I have to basically cut everything twice because I have my purple layer and then my spider layer. The spider layer, I'm going to flatline to the bodice pieces, but then for for the skirts, they're gonna be two uh, separate skirts so that it will flow and move and be all pretty. Oh, I think I'm gonna add pockets. I don't actually know that that's not historically accurate, but I was thinking like, I don't really want to make a reticule. I could always make one in the future. Like it could be really fun to embroider a spider onto this purple fabric, but I don't know that I wanna do that in the time frame. So I think I'm gonna add pockets. So yeah, let's do it. Let's get going. Flatlining is when you sew two pieces of fabric together to 
to create a single section that will work as one piece. So I'm going to pin, then sew, the spider web fabric to the purple satin wrong side to my right side, and then baste it down. Once all the pieces are done, I can begin to sew the bodice together as per the instructions. Okay, so everything that is over or is going to be overlocked is already overlocked now, and obviously all of these are flat lined. So sleeve, sleeve, front, back. My pockets are also overlocked, and then I overlocked the purple layers of the skirt. This fabric here doesn't really fray like the um, spider web, so we're not going to actually even worry about like French seaming or overlocking them because there's no purpose. Like it's already a a clean crisp edge. So basically the next step is going to be to put the sleeves together. I'm gonna do the sleeves and then the bodice and then attach them to the bodice. And from there, I'll move on to the skirts. To make the sleeves, I'm going to add a gather stitch in the top and bottom of the sleeve. Then I can gather the bottom sleeve down to the length of the sleeve band and pin the sleeve band to the gathered edge with the right sides together. From there, I will press the band away from the sleeve, then fold and press it twice to encase the raw edge of the gathered sleeve. Finally, I can sew the sleeve together with the right sides together. I've got some sleeves. Look how cute they are. I like the little purple of this. I'm also gonna do the same with the neckline. So the like ribbon will be purple. So there'll just be a tiny bit of purple. And then I actually have right there. Wow, you're seeing a lot of behind the scenes right now. <sighs> Sweats, <laughs> that purple right there is uh going to be a sash or like a like a belt i guess that i'm going to do around my waist so that it'll kind of break up all of the spider web oh my god i'm so in love i can't wait this is Let, let's put this bodice together for the bodice, I'm going to pin and sew the bodice front to the bodice back at the shoulders. Then I can add the casing for the ribbon by sewing the band right sides together at the neck edge of the bodice. I can then press it away from the bodice and double fold it under to encase the raw edge and stitch that down, just like I did on the sleeves. Once that is done, I can sew the side seams together and add the sleeves. I will finish it all off with feeding the ribbon through the channel. All right, we have a finished bodice. Woo! Now we're gonna put the purple layer together with the pockets, and I'm also gonna make that little ribbon over there, and then I'll get the black layer together, and then we can attach the, 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 the things, all the things. Anyway, okay, cool, bye. All right, friends, it is day three of making this Bridgerton Regency gown, but make it gothic. And I have two layers of skirts and a completed bodice that I need to attach and add elastic to, to make it basically finished. I didn't take video of it, but I did do the hem last night. I hand stitched the front hem and then I just machine stitched the back hems because it is a train and I want it very long and luxurious, but the front needs to be high enough to wear like, I can walk without stepping on myself. So I have two skirts. I also am gonna get my embroidery machine turned on and going so that I can start stitching out freestanding lace spiders. I'm gonna start, I have two different sizes that I've purchased from Urban Threads. I will link the designs that I've purchased below. And I am going to start by, I think, stitching out a test size in purple, like in a dark purple of each 
spider and then kind of decide from there if I'm gonna do black and purple or just black. I'm afraid the black on black might not show up, so that's why I'm doing both. I also have a lot more purple thread than I do black thread, so um, might as well make the tests on a color I have more of. Once I've figured out a size of spider that I would like, I will just jump right into cleaning them up and getting them embellished and things like that. By the end of today, I'll have a wearable dress. The question is, how embellished is that dress going to be? But that's a good place to be in, to be honest. I would really like to have it very embellished though, because... Obviously. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so this is my embroidery machine. This is the M7. It is a seven needle embroidery machine. It's from Janome. I have a playlist of embroidery focused videos that I will link below so that if you want a way super deep dive into embroidery for costuming and stuff. I've got a lot of information down there, but for this purpose, I'm just gonna explain to you a couple of the things I'm doing, the materials I'm using, and then we're gonna get down to business. So, got my files on my flash drive that I will pull up onto my machine. I need to make a bobbin of the color that I wanna use because with freestanding lace, there is the bobbin, the bottom thread is a huge component of the actual design. So you'll actually see the bobbin thread. Normally in like other kinds of embroidery, you don't actually see the bobbin. So you can just use white. I have my big bobbin white that I normally use for everything else, but this is freestanding lace. So we're gonna do purple first. We're gonna do all of our tests on purple. And when I do, and when I do my tests, I'll explain the things I use and how I'm planning to use them. But for now, let's upload our file, make a bobbin. Okay, so for my embroidery nerds out there, I'm using Floriani thread. This is the PF661. They have Floriani at your local quilt shops if you're like interested. I will also be, if I do use black, I have the Floriani black as well. And now I guess we gotta thread the machine. I'm not gonna do that on camera though. I hope that's okay. So this is the Embellish Rinse Away Mesh. It is from Embellish. It is for freestanding lace. So I'm doing two layers of it because I think that it will just create a stronger standing freestanding lace. And if it's too much, then like I use, I worst case scenario, I wasted just like a small square, but best case scenario, I will have a really good freestanding lace when I am done. So now I'm going to get my machine going. Okay, so this is gonna get sewn on this way and then fold it over and over just like we did the neckline. And I will be putting elastic into it. Um, I'll try to get footage of it, but with my machine going, it's there's just gonna be so much noise. It's gonna be nuts, but I'll do my best. Now let's look at our embroidery. All right, here's our embroidery. These are our two spiders. They're only like slightly different in size. This is definitely gonna be the size for the belt and I'm gonna stitch it out in black. I think I'm gonna do like five or six of these and maybe like two or three of these and then a black one. These are kind of what I'm thinking about using for decorations. I have a whole pile of stuff here. I think what I'm gonna do is just like cut this out, get it water, like soaked in water and then um, whilst others are stitching out. And once it dries, I might start putting beads, like laying them on it to see what it looks like. And then just like sew them down once I've figured out what I want. But I have a lot of options. Like I thought this could be cool for spider web. Uh, these are like purple, but they also are really, really dark and they're sparkly. So I thought they could be really cool. I have some of these jet black beads. Uh, these are just rhinestones, jet black sequins and black beads. I figured since the embroidery is purple, I should do like darker colors on top. So I'll figure it out. But basically in like the next 15 minutes, I'll have a wearable dress and then it's all embellishments from here.
Okay, so I've had major issues just placing these. So sewing them obviously has to happen. You're not gonna be able to get any visuals based off of this little guy, but basically I was trying to place the bugle beads on the, the leg lines or the body and legs. And then these beads like in the middle to be like eyes or whatever. And then this at the top. I don't like the white at all. I don't have anything like it in black. And I'm, I've already stitched out all six and it's really early. It's only 3.30. So I'm gonna go to my Joann's. They have literally Literally these same bugle beads in black they're like with the twisted centers I'm gonna go get some of those and maybe see if I can get anything else that I would like to add to this dress or put on this because like I just can't the white looks really bad like putting white into this gown would just be a really bad news bears to me so I'm gonna head to Joanne fabrics and we're gonna go buy some beads and maybe go to Michael's and buy some beads and then once we're done with all the bead buying we'll do some bead sewing yes Okay, yes, and one last thing. I know this is not a cute look. I'm going to do some tacking of the top layer onto the bottom layer so that when I walk, the two trains stay together. We'll do that after we've gotten all of the beadwork spiders done. So those are things that are coming. Uh, and I'm also probably gonna make a petticoat to wear underneath this, one thing at a time. Okay, my mission was successful. Now I just have to take these all out of their packaging, see which ones sparkle the most, and start making my spiders. It's pretty close, but I think that these two down here, which are the Czech seed beads from Michaels, I think these are the ones that are slightly shinier. And I say slightly. Hey friends, so it is day four. This is the last day I'm working on this. I did attempt to embellish uh, some of these spiders. So this one I did with rhinestones and I did one before it with beads that I took out. Basically, they never, once I put them onto the gown, they never actually looked like spiders and that they just looked really bad. So I do not think I'm going to use any of the applique I made, even like the spiders without anything on it put on to the dress just kind of looked like purple blobs and I mean I'm pretty sure it's just because like of the webbing beneath it so if I had done the webbing in like white and then the legs and the rest of it maybe in just black or in purple it might have looked better but we're beyond that now I'm accepting that the embroidery is just not gonna happen we're not gonna use it it's totally okay and, and uh, now I am going to spend today I have to basically tack the spider web fabric to the purple fabric at the hem so that when I walk around in the dress the hems stay together otherwise it'll be kind of like a pain in the butt when I'm moving and stuff also I'm gonna make myself a petticoat just a super quick easy white petticoat I have some tool tape that I bought yesterday at Joanne fabrics I have some white cotton that I bought a few weeks ago that I washed yesterday and I'm basically just gonna throw together a very simple petticoat to wear underneath this to give it a little extra volume but that's it then we'll be done which is awesome. I am super excited for the Bridgerton ball tomorrow. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I guess let's just get these finishing touches done. I have pinned this hem here, if you see that. Don't mind the messiness on my floor. I vacuum after my projects because it doesn't make sense. But anyway, um, my friend Paisley and Glue has a really good video on YouTube that I will link below on how to do swing tacks. I think I'm gonna try the thread chain tack because I probably will only wear this two or three times. So like, you know, I don't need to worry about them being super strong. It's really just gonna be for a couple of hours and then probably like a convention here or there. So we're gonna do that one first because it's Faster, and I have about 21 of these I have to do. So I'm just gonna get going and I think it'll take me a couple of hours. And then once I'm done with that, I can start on the petticoat. This is weird, I'm making things backwards this time. Okay, so it's making me lightheaded to do this down here. So I'm actually basically gonna lift the whole dress up and put it on my table and try to do it from my table. So we're, we're switching locations and then we'll get back to time-lapse. Sorry, that means there will be less of this pretty princess. I know, baby, you want to be on all the videos. Uh, so I will move spots and then we'll get back to this. Thank you. 
Okay, so the swing tacks are in place. I think there was 21 of them and I actually got fast enough to do them in two and a half minutes each, which I'm very proud of. Uh, I also sewed a hook and bar into my little belt thingy that will just go like that. So that is done and ready. The next thing I wanna do is make a petticoat. So I got two measurements. My, um, actually I used the gown that I made and I measured the front length of that panel, which measured 48 inches. I want my petticoat shorter than that. So we're gonna cut our fabric at 48 inches, but then we're gonna do a two inch hem at the bottom, but 48 inches and my waist around my ribs is 28 inches. So I will be cutting two panels of my white cotton. This is, I think, 44 inches wide. It's whatever the Joann's normally is. So I'm gonna cut two panels of this, 40 inches long, and then um, we're gonna sew it up, do a hem, pleat, add these. I'll show you all of that, but we're gonna try to make this petticoat in under two hours. So if I start talking really fast, that is why. But if I can finish this petticoat under two hours, I can take a little break before I have a meeting, a photo shoot, and then I have to make dinner. So it's a busy day in here. Also, my new video just went live. If you have not seen my remaking my first ever corset video, maybe please go check that out and give it some love. Anyway, let's do this. We're, we're slaying, we're slaying today. <laughs> Okay, so since I'm using this fabric salvage to salvage, I don't have to do a French seam or overlock the seams or anything, which is awesome and gonna help me just do this faster. So for the top, like sides, so I'm gonna, these are gonna be side seams. I'm actually gonna do one side at eight inches all the way down so that I can have a slit to get this on and off. And then I will pin the other side all the way up and I'm actually gonna um, start sewing on this side so I don't forget about this. But that's what I'm gonna do is just pin these together and um, sew it on up. Okay, so I folded up my hem. Uh, basically, I just did two quite larger folds. I think they're like, the first one was maybe three quarters of an inch and this one's like an inch and a half. Uh, so I did this and I pressed it and now we have the waistband, which I have marked off half and quarters. And then I've also marked off uh, or pinned my halves on the top of this. And now I am going to pin that in those various places and then start pleating down my cotton. Um, I'm going to go actually have four inches on each side of the center front that will not be pleated at all. And then um, the rest of it will get pleated down. So I'll show you that in just a second. All right, I'm gonna stitch all of these down and uh, then attach them to that, the RB. All right, it took me just about 90 minutes to whip this up, but I think it looks great. I think it fits great. I am very excited. The pleats are a little meh, but like <laughs> for, for an hour and a half petticoat, like let's be real. I also had to take the hem up one more time because it was just a little too long. I'm pretty sure my dress is gonna be too long. YOLO, I'm just gonna wear heels. Like we're gonna be so historically inaccurate. I'm gonna break the internet. Like I'm just going to, I'm, I really should just call this the petty dress because let's be honest, most of my inspiration this week has been fueled from a lot of like hate comments I've been getting on a video on Facebook right now. And so I've kind of just been sitting here like, doing all of my weird <laughs> satin and like Halloween fabric sewing, just being like maniacal laugh, maniacal laugh, you know, cause what else can you do when like people are being mean to you online? Just laugh at them. Like, I don't know. I'm sorry, my video is going viral. I don't, I don't know what to tell you people. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, we're here. We're, we're, we're looking, we're looking cute. Uh, yeah. All right, I am going to uh, call it for today.
Hi friends, thank you all so much for watching this video. I had a really good time at the Bridgerton Ball. Unfortunately, a lot of the footage I got wasn't very bright, but basically my opinion of it was it was fun. Uh, it has really cute photo opportunities. The actors are incredible. They do a really good job and they work really hard to put on a great show. Personally, for me, I don't think it's worth more than the $50 tickets. We did the $50 ones and went at 4 p.m. I don't really think it's worth like more than that. I know a lot of people disagree and that's totally okay, but uh, it actually ended up thunderstorming during the show and we kind of got like rained out to be able to do our location shoot, which was near this like really pretty pond. I want to go there eventually, but we went somewhere a little bit closer to our house the next day in the heat of the day to film this uh, outro. So please give this video a lot of love because Toby and I, we were real sweaty monsters <laughs> after this. But uh, anyway, so that is all. I think my opinions on this dress are that like I it never needed the embroidery to begin with. That outer fabric just really speaks for itself. I really like the pattern. I love the elastic that I did versus tying it. I think it is really pretty to tie, but um, I'm lazy. And yeah, I still need to take the hem up about like another, I'll probably just fold it up one more time, to be honest. You know, I don't dislike Regency as much as I thought I would. Like I used to hate the silhouette, but I actually don't mind it. So that's a good thing. I'm curious what other kinds of things that I could do, like, but make it goth or whatever. I feel like that's a fun little like series that I, I could indulge in at some point. I don't know. What did you guys think of this dress? Was it gothic enough for you? Should I have gone further? Would you be more interested in me doing some like morning garments? Like morning O-U-R, not like morning like coffee. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments because I'm just interested. I will be right back to work on Nadja. The next video for the What We Do in the Shadows series is going to be making a corset cover and bum pad for Nadja and that will be the last one on the undergarments. I'm really only doing these undergarments because like I've never made either of these before and also I've seen some videos of people you doing both and I really like how smooth the corset area looks but also like just that little extra oomph for the bum roll. Um, I don't know. It's just something that I really like and so I want to try it and like if I don't like it then I don't have to use it but I'm gonna use fabric from my stash to make them both, so why not? Yeah, so that'll be the next video I will have up. And if you really do like enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing to my channel, give this video a thumbs up. And uh, I also have a Patreon where you can get early access to videos, access to the Discord channel, and uh, it really helps out with purchasing things for the studio like a dress form, which is my goal right now. So thank you all once again for watching this video and until next time, may all your dreams come true. Yeah, you bet. You, you wanna just sit right here while I film? Is that okay?